It is November 11th, 2022, and you're watching The Code Report. No great JavaScript framework would be complete without its own meta framework for server-side rendering to go along with it. React has Next, Vue has Nuxt, Angular has Analog, Svelte has Kit, Quick has City, and as of yesterday, Solid has Start. As a latecomer to the JavaScript framework war, it has the luxury of taking the best features from its peers and puts them together into one beautiful package. And refreshingly, it graciously gives all of them credit in its announcement blog. Like when the Germans used mustard gas in World War One. I, I don't seem to recall the French giving them any credit when they totally copied this game-changing, blazingly deadly feature. I think it says a lot about the team behind Solid giving credit where credit is due. But they've also done a lot of their own innovation with a UI framework that's already very solid. Like other meta frameworks, it uses file system routing and supports nested layouts in the same way that Nux does, where a file can shadow a directory, then has an outlet component that projects all the content from the subroutes. This differs from Next 13, which has a layout file for each of your layouts. Both Next.js and Svelkit have a variety of naming conventions for the files in the routing system, but one major criticism of this is that it leads to a bunch of files with the same name in your project, like you'll have a hundred page.js files. Solid Start takes the approach more like the old Next.js, where a file name will represent a route, and it even takes things one step further, where instead of having a bunch of index files, you can wrap the file name in parentheses to give it a more descriptive name. That's pretty cool, but things get a lot more interesting when we start talking about data fetching. Like many other meta frameworks, you can export a function in this case called route data, that can fetch data on the server or client when the user navigates to a new route. What felt kind of weird at first to me was that you also need to use this create route data function that takes a callback that does the actual data fetching. My initial thought was why not just simplify this API and return the data from the route data function, but it turns out there's a good reason for this that will make sense in just a minute. But first, after we fetch this data, we can then go into the UI component and access it with the use route data hook, while providing us with end-to-end -end type safety. Now, it doesn't just return the object itself, but rather a resource. The resource has useful properties on it, like loading, that we can use with built-in components like show to easily handle the loading UI. That's extremely useful, but things get even better. If we go back into the create route data function, it also takes a second argument that contains one or more keys, which allows you to refetch this data in a granular way later. If you've ever used React Query, this will feel very familiar. For example, we can use the refetch route data function with that key without needing to reload the entire page. And we can also do more advanced things with it, like optimistic updates, and handle multiple data fetchers at the same time. That's what data fetching looks like, but what about mutations? First, I'll point out that you can create API routes anywhere in the project by simply exporting a function that has a matching HTTP verb. Like we could export API routes from the same file. We can't do a git request here because the component's already doing that, but we could easily add a git API route from any other file. That's pretty cool, but we can also set up RPC or remote procedure calls directly in a component. There's a function called server with a dollar sign, the dollar sign representing that it only runs on the server, and that gives us a way to write server-side code literally anywhere without having to create a new file and follow a bunch of restful API conventions that we don't really need. This is a really cool innovation by Solid Start that I think has the potential to really simplify the way we think about server-side code in a meta framework like this. But we're not done yet. The framework also has actions very similar to Remix. Actions allow you to mutate data, and when the mutation is complete, it will automatically refetch the existing data on the page. Page, and it also provides an object to monitor the state of that update. I really appreciate their emphasis on data fetching, because that tends to be the hardest thing to get right. And when you get it right, it often eliminates the need for these wacky, wavy, inflatable arm flailing state management systems that can often lead developers to an involuntary 72-hour psychiatric hold. The bottom line is that Solid Start could be your best hope for survival if you are a refugee fleeing the war-torn React ecosystem. It only ships 5 kilobytes of JavaScript, as opposed to nearly 80 for Next.js. It doesn't have a shadow DOM, and is truly reactive. Watch my 100 second video for more details on that, because if we don't end this war, this war will end us. This has been The Code Report, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.